All right, I'm back. And holy cow, you people had a lot of ideas. I am, obviously, going to go back on what I said about only using like one or two of your ideas because there's a bunch of really good ones in here. Before we get into that though, which will probably take up most of this video, I'd like to talk about research. I do a lot of research for my stories. Sometimes they're like actual research, like for instance, for the first two Lucius Marcel stories in Indy Valley, I read two whole books on ancient Rome, one on the entire empire and one specifically on Pompeii. This was a little excessive and I certainly didn't have to do that much, but I always believe that inserting a little reality into your fantasy can make it seem all the more real. Also because it gives me an excuse to do research and often gives me ideas. The second type is a little bit different. I find media like an anime or a video game that has a similar concept or vibe to what I want to make and play or watch or read that thing a lot to get a better sense of what I want to do. I've done a little bit of both for this world. So to show you just how much background research can go into the creation of a world, I've mainly dug into both of these types of research. For the more academic version, I've begun watching Forged in Fire from the History Channel. Normally, I would go to a more academic form of research, like a book on the subject, but there are literally no books on medieval blacksmithing and very little material on modern blacksmithing either. Since the creation of weapons is going to be a major part of this world, I want to know some of the techniques behind blacksmithing and how weapons and armor are created. I'm also planning to do some research on alchemy sometime in the near future as well. The second type is that I picked up Monster Hunter World finally. I haven't gotten super far into it yet as I do find the gameplay a little bit repetitive, but already it's given me a lot of good ideas on how I'd like the wild continent to be, and some of the aesthetics I'd like to use for adventuring expeditions and the like. A lot of the monsters are the wrong aesthetic, I'd prefer more mythological or demonic looking creatures than dinosaurs, just personal preference really, but it's given me a good idea of how animal like monsters might actually behave and how to go about handling them. Obviously, if you don't want to, you don't have to do as much research as I do when making your own world, but I find that it adds that extra level of realism and allows you to be more of an expert in the important aspects of your world. Now, for the races. I've compiled a big list of every suggestion you guys gave me, and I'm going to weed through them right now. Keep in mind, if yours didn't get picked, it probably just didn't fit into what I wanted to do with the world or didn't get my imagination going. So here's the full list of all the suggestions in no particular order. Okay, already this list is a little too big, so right away I'm just going to take out the ones that for whatever reason just didn't interest me. Nothing against them of course, I am simply a person led by aesthetic, even if I don't quite know what that aesthetic is yet. Okay, that's a little bit better. There's a couple of others that I'm going to take out right now, but for different reasons, so I want to express my process with them a little more. Now, the Mosa Lankja. Tika Blang and Blemies all seem more like monsters than full on races, but they do sound interesting, so hold on to those gear until we get to the monsters. As far as Fae goes, I'd love to include them, but they already play a major role in a world that I'm already developing with a story that I'm trying to get published currently, so I'm going to take them out as well. Which leaves us with about six different ideas, and already I'm seeing a fun idea in a couple of these. Mostly because I've had a budding interest in yokai lately, hence the idea for the other world, I'm going to cannibalize one or two of my ideas from that world. Because I'm seeing human spiders, and that could literally just be the Tsuchi Gumo, a race of giant spiders in Japanese folklore, I think that name will be a little too oddly Japanese for this more western fantasy world, so I'm going to go with one of the other names of this yokai, the Ogumo. And also, listen, I was going to pass this one by, right? Probably not include them. And then I got this comment from Sir Artanis 7. They have a set of spider-like legs attached to their backs, and they are the craftsmen of the world. And I got a very vivid image of them in my head, so there you are. Now, I'm about to connect a couple of these ideas together, but it might not be apparent how yet, so hold on to your horses. So right away I see a flying gliding species, and thought Gerbil had the idea that they might be based on Mothmen. I think I want to go in a slightly different direction with it. Since I already have spider yokai, let's bring Tengu, crow yokai, into this picture as well. Since the main continent will be rather rocky and mountainous, that would make a lot of places for the Tengu to dwell, since they're often found living on tops of mountains. I also see dog people, and simultaneously I'm thinking Kitsune, mischievous fox yokai, or Okami, noble wolf spirits. Maybe I'll fit both of them, maybe not, but here's how I think they all fit together. Since yokai are often considered demons or spirits, let's say that they are the descendants of demons. I don't want to make them demons themselves because I think that will get confusing when talking about the sentient, not always evil yokai versus the monstrous, evil, crazy, powerful monster demons. So let's see, I'm looking up some synonyms of the word descendant and immediately the word that catches my eye is scion. 
That could work. These descendants of demons could be called scions. We'll see. I might end up translating descendant into Latin or something and using that as well, but for now we'll go with scion. So how did monstrous demons produce sentient scions? I want it to not really be known, but we'll put some kind of creation myth in place. For now, we'll say that some great god or other killed the Satan equivalent or something like that, and the scions arose from his blood or limbs, etc. I'll figure this out in more detail when we go over the history of the world, which will probably be like the next episode or something like that. So that takes care of about half of the race ideas that still exist, which leaves us with orcs, a climbing-oriented species, and plant people. I really like the idea of plant people. I think it's something that hasn't been done that much in fantasy worlds, and I could potentially combine that with the climbing species idea and make them the main race on the wild continent. I think I will probably do that, so I will set them aside for now and figure out more details later. Then there are orcs. Like, three different people requested orcs. So I've thought about it for a while, and I've decided that I would like to include them. Now, orcs are a little weird because they get a couple of different interpretations. The classic Tolkien orc is a tribal warrior race who are purely evil and just crave destruction. Somewhere on the more sane end of the spectrum is the Elder Scrolls, where the Orsimer are actually probably a kind of elf and are still the warrior race but a little less than in Tolkien. And finally, you've got Eberron on the far end of the spectrum where they're actually nature shamans trying to defend the world from incursions from the tentacle monsters. I'm going to go with something different than any of these, because in any fantasy world you have to have racism. It's just a thing that has to happen. So my idea is this. The orcs were a slave race created by the old empire, the one that we don't know anything about yet. But since that empire is no more, the orcs have found themselves with a new freedom. People are still really scared of them because they've been bred to be really strong and scary, so a lot of them are still lower class or find themselves working as servants. But I think a lot of them have probably found their calling in quelling the demons that are attacking the cities. I think since they're already bigger and stronger than everyone else, many of them probably just decided to put that to good use. So there are a lot of orcs in local defensive units or more specialized mercenary groups that hunt the demons. Alright, so here's what we've got so far. Humans are obviously the main species. Then, also commonly in the cities, we have a sizable orc population. The unnamed plant people are chilling out on the other continent. If anyone has any ideas to flesh out the plant people, I would love to hear them. And roaming around the civilized continent are the scions, who have several subtypes, including craftsmen spiders, aloof ravens, and shapeshifting foxes and or noble dogs. This leads me to a question, I guess. I don't have a huge one today, as this episode has been more about putting together the answers from last week than anything. But I have a few minor questions about the scions. A. Does anyone have any better names? I do like Scion, but it almost doesn't sound quite right. I probably still want something that has a similar sound, like an S at the beginning. B. Just how much do they interact with the human population? Do they openly walk around in the cities? Are they entirely exclusive to the forests and their own communities? Or are they more like real-life yokai where they occasionally interact with humans, but only in ways that make you unsure if it was them or not? And finally, C. Do we want shape-shifting foxes, noble dog people, or both? I figure the answer will probably be both, but I want to see if anyone has a strong opinion one way or another. Cool. I think that about does it for this week. Thanks everyone once again, and I'm super excited to finally get into the meat of this world, starting next week with the history.